Um, Hi, everybody. My name is Scott, and I'm a believer in Jesus Christ in recovery from alcohol and drugs. Hi, Scott. Just awesome to see all of you here. Let me pray. Lord, thank you. You are working, um, and you're uh, working in our lives, in my life, uh, every life that's represented here, their families, and, and uh, beyond, Lord. Every person who struggles is impacting seven, at least, people. So, Lord, would your spirit move tonight through this simple lesson, biblical lesson on sponsorship? Would you, uh, would you be the teacher? In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Yeah, so uh, I just want to promote that blended and blessed thing. I do marriage counseling, and, and we were sitting around the table talking with some people this weekend, and, and we had kind of the recognition that just like everybody's being impacted by addiction, just about every person is impacted by blended family in our culture anymore. So I just want to really tell you this is an incredible conference with the number one speaker uh, on blended families in the nation from a Christian perspective and uh, would just encourage you to be there. And of course be here next week for my friend Pasong. You won't, yeah, you'll be moved. So, tonight we're going to look at sponsorship, that's our topic, and we're going to cover some things. I'm going to cover just some very practical things, the why of a sponsor, the what of a sponsor, and the how to find a sponsor, why we need one, what are you looking for, and what is his role or her role, and finally, how do you find one? If you've been around here on a slightly different track here very much, you've heard me say that recovery is not about what brought you into the rooms, it's about building healthy relationships with both God and human beings. Because we all end up here for one reason, broken relationships and our reactions to them. And so here we're about building healthy relationships instead of the sick ones. And um, recovery, if you're just here for an early taste of it, is just another word for the Christian word called sanctification, uh, or growing to be a healthier human being, in this case through Jesus. And uh, bottom line is to grow in Christ means we're growing in healthy relationships with God and the human beings we impact. So um, obviously this, is, this will be the defining principle of our lives at the end of our lives. It won't be what we accomplished or what we did or how much golf we played. It's going to be our relationships that we will care about. And as Jesus said, the whole Bible could be put in two sentences, and that is that we're to love God and we're to love people. That's what our calling is as followers of Christ. So tonight I want to point out that there are three very important relationships that we bring into this thing called recovery. So I just ask you as I go through these three that you would do a, a, an evaluation of where you stand with all three of these. They are essential to recovery, and that's why we teach this lesson. So the first one is Jesus. And this is obviously the most important one to us who know him. And this is the key difference between Celebrate Recovery and any other 12-step recovery program out there. And CR is a ministry of the local church, if you don't know. And since you're in a church, you're at a place where we believe the Bible is all truth. And that means that we worship the name above all names. That's Jesus Christ here in these rooms. And it's only through him that we believe he offers us the abundant life of victory over whatever we come in here struggling with and changing that to love. And, uh, but it also means we, we come in here with him knowing that it's about a relationship with him that starts and finishes it, it all. And if you're struggling here with that relationship today, we welcome you. Uh, obviously, we're not force feeding anything. I came into these rooms an atheist. Uh, and certainly a major skeptic of all things biblical or spiritual. And, and so we welcome you here, but I hope we don't push you away with what we say God is here. It's Jesus. And uh, we just encourage you to, to pray about that and hear what we say and consider who he is tonight. So the first relationship in Celebrate Recovery is Jesus and, and a higher power. Uh, God is an essential part of this spiritual program of action. Second, after Jesus, the next key recovery relationships you need to evaluate and make sure you have is your own recovery group. And it's a fact that 
There is no recovery without going to group. Nowhere on planet Earth do the 12 steps happen where you don't go to a group. So it's an essential relationship to evaluate and have in your life. And it's important because it's in those relationships where you begin and continue your healing through sharing your own struggles, but equally important, slowing down and listening to others, getting to care about others, give back to others, and connect with others. And really, there's no place, I think, that I've ever found in my life, and I would argue this for anybody, where you will meet people quicker and get to know them quicker and be in a healthier relationship with others than in a recovery group. So first Jesus, then your recovery group, and third, tonight's lesson, your sponsor. So you need to know Jesus, you need to have a recovery group that you know, and you need to have a sponsor, and that's tonight's lesson. So it's my prayer for each of you that you have, or will soon have, all three of these recovery relationships. If you don't, then you have some work before you, but don't fret, tonight's gonna help you along the journey, and, and I think it'll be encouraging, not discouraging. So let's spend the rest of tonight on this particular race relationship called your sponsor. So let's get to the what I promised. Why? Why do you need a sponsor? Why should I have a sponsor? I've, it's probably the number one question I get is how do I find a sponsor and why do I need one? So um, why do you need a sponsor? Well, first, it's biblical. And everything we do, we, we don't preach it unless it comes out of the scriptures, but none of us are intended to do life alone. In the beginning, God said, it's not good for us to be alone. And for this reason, no one ever recovers from anything alone. In fact, I don't know if you think about it, but isolation is arguably our biggest enemy. How easily can any one of us choose to isolate ourselves? The Bible tells us clearly that we human beings, out of selfish desires, love to isolate. Proverbs 18.1 in the New King James says those who seek, uh, who isolate, seek their own desires. Now, much of this program, if you haven't heard it, I was in a meeting this morning and this word came up. It's, it's about knowing and learning yourself and your motives. And this verse is a motive revealer. And you may or may not have ever thought about why you like to be by yourself. Some of you were born more that way than others, but we all like to avoid responsibility. We like to avoid people who hurt us. And so we love to isolate. And since recovery is all about relationships and we're here to grow through those relationships, a sponsor is a key part of not isolating. And as you'll hear, they make sure we don't in one of their roles. And basically, uh, uh, our sponsor is our recovery mentor, and the Bible tells us we need those people as well. So a sponsor is biblical, but it's also essential to your recovery. Nobody recovers without a sponsor. So, okay, well, why is that? Why, why is it that people need the sponsor? Well, I believe there's a lot of reasons, but the most important reason is that we can't see ourselves clearly, especially early in this program, but even today. Uh, we all have what are called blind spots, and this program requires rigorous honesty and truth about ourselves, and if we don't have somebody in our life who's mentoring us and speaking through our blind spots, we're gonna move forward at a very slow pace because we lose the battle of knowing who we are and what our motives actually are. And uh, I love the Bible, it pulls no punches and it tells us that he who hates correction is stupid. Yeah, it actually uses that word, speaks right to me, because I don't like correction and I suspect most people don't like to be corrected at face value. But that's one of the roles as a sponsor. In fact, it's really a pretty brave thing to have somebody who you allow to speak into your blind spots. How brave? Well, I love a quote I ran across a few years ago when I was preparing for this lesson last time I taught it, and it's from a British war hero of the 1800s. And he made a point to how brave it is to have a sponsor. He said this, he said, give me an adversary, a man of strength, that I might take him on in battle. This I do not fear, but save me from a candid friend. A sponsor is your candid friend, if you let them. 
And that's one of their roles, to speak into your blind spots that we all have. Dr. Henry Cloud defines the difference between a wise man and a fool, so often referred to in Scripture as opposing each other. And Dr. Cloud says the number one thing that defines a fool is that when the truth of God shines on that person's life, they either push back against it or run from it. A fool in some way in their sick thinking runs from the truth or often attacks the truth or even the messenger who gives them the truth. That's often first most God because he's trying to break through to us, but it's often a particular circumstance he's speaking to or a particular person he's using who's pulling our covers in that moment. And the difference between the fool who runs or attacks the truth and the wise is that when the truth shines on a wise person's life, they adjust their lives to the truth. Rebuke a wise man and he will become wiser still, the Proverbs say. I've learned in my life the hard way and continue to how stupid I can be. Today I seek and try to adjust, though not always smoothly or easily, to the truth that includes my sponsor speaking into my life on a weekly basis. I must be honest in seeking the truth. Most of the time I find I actually get affirmed, and that's the good news. You don't have to fear it. Most of the time you'll find out your sponsor's building you up. But the truth is somehow... He gives me information that's quite different than I was thinking, and sometimes very different than what I wanted to hear in that moment. I then remind myself that the truth often hurts before it heals and sets us free. And it is the truth I seek, as you'll hear later. So why have a sponsor? The why is that it's biblical and essential to your recovery. The next question is the what. What are you looking for in your sponsor? Well, first, plain and simple, they got to be the same sex. I don't have anything more to say about that, but it's amazing how many people have, over the years have told me they can have a sponsor of the opposite sex. No, you can't. So, um, <laughs> the next thing you're looking for is the, do they have all three of those relationships themselves? Jesus, their group, and their own sponsor. Psalm 1 says, Blessed is the man, that being you, who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And this is a spiritual program of action. So if you don't have a sponsor who understands the spiritual nature of this program through the one higher power who gives you the spirit to understand it, then you're probably only going to get human advice. And that can lead you to human results. And so I really hope you make sure they have a spiritual connection with Jesus as a foundation. Secondly, are they going to group? Most cases the answer is obviously yes because that's where you're going to find your sponsor. But if they are not, they don't have the most basic requirement down of recovery and they are not in recovery. And third, do they have a sponsor? The program is called Each One Teach One. I love that statement. We each one teach somebody else. That's giving back. That's the 12th step. And how can we give back and teach what we have not practiced if the most important thing for a sponsor is those three relationships? So make sure they have those three relationships. Next, I chose this, but I think it's important. Are they humble and transparent themselves? You know, the Bible says we will know somebody by their fruit. So, so what is the fruit of their life? What's their motives? What's driving them to be a sponsor and to come alongside you and help you on this journey? Um, the simple saying I love, and this program is filled with simple sayings, but when it comes to sponsors and your life in recovery, hang out with the winners. It's a great little saying because there's both in recovery. And who you hang out with will determine your life very, very much. In fact, that's scriptural. And who do you find yourself hanging out with? People who are sick as you are or once were? Or people who have what you want and that you want to help you get ahead? You will find what you're looking for. That's for sure. And are they living out the experience, strength, and hope, the promises of peace and serenity and understanding things that used to baffle them with a wisdom that comes from their higher power in this program? You know, tons of people learn the recovery language, but their lives are still wrecks. We call them dry drunks in AA. So to hang out with the winners, listen to the biblical contrast here. I love the Bible. It says, he who walks with the wise, that person will become wise but a companion of fools will suffer harm. 
So make sure you hang out with the winners and that you're looking for a sponsor who has what you want and make sure you want the good, not the bad. And hopefully you're gonna find a sponsor who's there to serve you. And you gotta watch that to learn that over time, but they're not gonna lord their authority over you. Uh, though as I've said many times, my sponsor was very tough on me when I needed him to be tough on me. But I knew he, him well enough to know that his motives were for my benefit. And he was out to help me apply this program and learn this program effectively, even when he was being tough. So your sponsor becomes a counselor in a biblical sense. What does that word mean biblically? Well, the Greek word translated as counselor is also translated as comforter. Interesting term if you're thinking of a sponsor, a counselor, or a comforter. It's the Greek word paraclete, which means to come alongside. So the person isn't above you, they're walking with you through this program of recovery. And this is very much like the God of the Bible. And many of you are going, well, what are you talking about? God is a punishing God. I'm in here because I've messed up my life and I know God's mad at me. Well, that's a misperception of who your God is. Because Jesus said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you are yoked to Jesus, you're walking alongside him. He's not pounding you. He's guiding you someplace. The Holy Spirit, this Greek word paraclete, means literally to come alongside. So not only does Jesus walk alongside you, but the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, comes alongside you to walk on the spiritual path to be with you as you heal and recovery. And this is a great picture of what a great sponsor looks like. One who is never lording, a sense of superiority or authority over us, but one who has learned well, they have to tell us the truth in love, but they do it with motives that are for our benefit, and you know it because they've been there for you, and you know that they're speaking the truth. So, finally, what are you looking for? Are they healthy and loving enough to tell you the truth? Are they able to confront your denial and procrastination? Yeah, it's both that I'm, I major in both of those. And, and those are my blind spots. And I find most people's. We don't like the truth. So we've covered quickly why you have a sponsor, what are the qualities of a good sponsor, and now let's look at the other what. What is the role of a sponsor? And it's kind of redundant because it's really quite a simple relationship, but this is so important, and I haven't covered it. The single most important role of a sponsor, bar none, is to help you work the steps, to apply these principles in your life so you can begin to say, I'm applying them in all my affairs as I serve others and carry this message to others in your own 12 steps. And the scriptures tell us that the wounds of a friend can be trusted, but an enemy multiplies kisses. This is a powerful truth. Friends are not the people who tell us what we want to hear. Iron sharpens iron. There are sparks when people are friendly enough to us to love us enough to speak the truth. And that is our sponsor. And they're there to help guide us to the steps and the truth of our own lives. And if they never make you go, ouch, I didn't want to hear that, they're probably not a good sponsor or a real friend. But to me, because your sponsor's main role is to guide you to and through the steps, make sure your sponsor is someone who's consistently referring to the steps as you work through them, but also as you come to them and say, I'm mad at my wife, or I'm fighting my boss. And they will then, I'll just close with this, with what my sponsor always told me when I did that so consistently. Um, they'll guide you to the steps. So what's another role they have? Because honesty and breaking denial are the foundations of recovery, I'm going to go back to the key role. They're there to speak in to your blind spots. And if you don't want that in your life yet, I encourage you to test the waters by going to group, finding the grace that comes in those rooms so that you can come to trust the people that they are going to speak the truth in love to you about your blind spots. And ultimately... If we say recovery is all about healthy relationships, then your sponsor is going to become one of your true healthy relationships. Somebody who loves you, walks alongside you, serves you for the right reasons, 
is there for you when you need them, and tells you the truth when they see something you need to hear about your blind spots. Believe me, a sponsor will become very, very close to you if you don't run. They will know you and love you, and they will accept you, and you will honor them. And this is very rare indeed in this world, and that is the definition of a healthy relationship. When I came into this program, I didn't have very many of those, if any at all. So this lesson is the most single practical lesson we teach as we teach through a year-long series on this this step. It's just really grab what these, these issues and apply it to your life around a sponsor and watch your life improve. But, but why do you need one? They're biblical. They're essential. What are you looking for? Well, you're looking for sobriety in all three of those relationships in their, in their lives. What is their role? They're really to be your encourager, to come alongside you, speak the truth into your life, and reveal your blind spots so that you can start waking up and growing in the areas you've been stuck for a long time. So now the how. How do you find a sponsor? It's the number one question I get. How do I find a sponsor? Um, and the phone rings, and, and these are the answers. I wish I could say, here, listen to this old tape. It'll tell you so I don't have to take the time. But it, it's, it's really quite simple. These are six steps to how to find a sponsor. Pray and ask God. Because it's biblical, Jesus says, if you pray for anything according to my will, it will be done. So if you pray and you're willing, often it's we really don't want one or we want them to be exactly like we want or too many filters to find one. But if you pray and you're open to it, God will bring you a sponsor. That's a given because it's biblical and he wants you to have this mentor in your life. Next, it's huge, go to group. That's the first thing. Hey, how do I find a sponsor? Go to group. That's what I tell them. Go to group. It's that simple. Are you going to group? Well, I haven't been but once in the past four months. Well, you're never going to find a sponsor. How are you going to find a sponsor if you're not going to recovery groups? Because that's where you're going to find your sponsor. Third, as you go to groups, you listen and you ask, who, am I real? who has what I want? And I look forward to them sharing in group. I can't tell you, I was a meeting this morning, and, and there's about 10 people in that room that I can't wait to hear share. That they, they bring wisdom, they bring experience, they, they bring different things I need to hear every, every day from that group. Any of those could be my sponsor if I didn't already have one. Can you relate to their story? And uh, that might be your sponsor. Fourth, Come to the meeting before the meeting or the meeting after the meeting. You know, if you only come and you go to meetings and you leave, then how do you ever build a relationship because you can't cross-talk and you can't really meet anybody during the meeting? So you've got to show up at a place where you can build a relationship, a healthy relationship with somebody. And so you come and you hang out early or you hang out late and you get to have conversations and build healthy relationships, and that's where you'll find your sponsor. And uh, you wonder why we serve food here. Rec food isn't a part of a 12-step recovery program. Well, I think we're relatively wise because we serve food for that reason. You got a two-hour meeting where you can't talk to anybody, so we serve booth. We have a meeting before the meeting. We have a meeting after the meeting where you can talk and you can find a sponsor. Now you know why we serve our food. Hope you're utilizing it for that. Um, next, go to community recovery groups. We are not the only show in town, and we're working the 12 steps. I was in a meeting this morning. I encourage you to get out and go to other 12-step recovery meetings. They're phenomenal, and you will learn so much, and they got way more sponsors than Celebrate Recovery does. And so if you're going to your specific issue groups out in the community, it's the number one place you'll find a sponsor who has all three of those relationships because they're in the group, they have a higher power named Jesus, and it's evident and they will have their own sponsor because they'll talk about it all the time and in their shares. And finally, you got to ask. Oof. Scott was praying before the group saying, this is a hard one. For some people, this is really, really hard. But recovery is all about growing up. 
It's about becoming a man, becoming a woman. When I was a child, I thought like a child. I talked like a child. I reasoned like a child. But when I became a man or a woman, I put childish ways behind me. And here is a situation where you got to step out and ask somebody. And for some people, that's so scary. That is so hard. You're, 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 you're not an outgoing person like other people. It's harder for you. I get it. I've got empathy. It's not an easy thing for me. But let me soften the blow with some good news. If you do steps one through five that I just went through, it'll be easy. It's that simple. Why? Because if you're going to group and you're listening and you're sharing, you're getting to know people at a depth you never have in the rest of your life. And then you go to the meeting before the meeting and hanging out at the meeting after the meeting and you start talking and you're making friends and they're making your friends and that people are actually coming to you going, hey, do you got a sponsor? Wow, I didn't even have to ask. Because you're getting to know people because you did one through five. And, and if you do one through five, six will become easy, I promise. Because suddenly these people are your friends and you know them from group. And it won't be hard to determine that's the person I want because I find myself talking to you at the meeting before the meeting or the meeting after the meeting. So easy does it, follow the program, it really does work. Um, finally, see our short of sponsors. If you don't know that, we are. That's why I get the question, how do I find one? We don't have a ton of them. So we often recommend an accountability partner here until you find a sponsor. And so what's the difference between accountability partner and a sponsor? Accountability partner is a teammate. They're just walking with you. They're, they aren't above you. They, aren't, they haven't learned. As, they're, they're learning themselves. So you're just walking through the journey of recovery with them. They're a teammate. They're the, the guard to your center on an offensive line in football. The sponsor is your guide. They're the coach. They're the coach on the sidelines going, you can do this. I can answer your question. Here's the playbook. I know how to play football. I know how to do recovery. So there you go. You'll all be blessed by your sponsor. Uh, I sure was. And uh, I want to share for two minutes before I close five things that my sponsor told me the most often that I can still hear his voice in my head. And, and these, are, these are gifts to me. And may you receive it, whatever you can remember. He, he had to pound these into my head. But this may be the first time or the 30th time you've heard it. My sponsor said to me all the time, keep it simple, Scott. Those who figure it out will go back out. You don't try to figure this thing out. Just keep it simple. Go to meeting, get a sponsor, work the steps, and get into service. Keep it that simple. Go to meeting, get, get a sponsor, work the steps, get into service. It works if you work it. Don't try to figure this whole thing out because you'll go back out, and you will complicate it because you're a sick thinker, Miller. Just keep it simple. Finally, he always told me, always seek the truth, no matter how it's presented. If you aren't, ask yourself, why not? Only the truth will set you free. He was a non-believer the first time he told me that. He eventually came to the Lord. He's dying with Jesus today, thank God. But I think he loved that one because he was a tough drunk. And he was tough on me when he needed to be. And I think this gave him permission to nail me <laughs> if I was acting stupid. But he always said, why aren't you seeking the truth? I'm telling you the stinking truth, and you're not doing it. So get with it, because why don't you want the truth I'm telling you? And I learned, because I didn't want to get beat up again. Third, he told me, every, I love this, I shared this in a meeting this morning, every situation in life fits into one of the first two lines of the serenity prayer. And he'd say, you're being a fool right now. That's because I was trying to control a person, a place, or an event, and I was complaining to him about it. And he'd say, which line of the serenity prayer, Miller? Yeah, the first one. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Be wise instead of the fool. Finally, he'd ask me all the time, how's that working for you? Long before Dr. Phil ever came up with that, Harold <laughs> used to say, how's it working for you, Miller? And he would usually laugh with that one at my stupidity that here I go again, repeating the same things over and over again, expecting different results. And the last thing he told me was fourth and fifth step at Miller. If you think you're above somebody else or you didn't have a part in that conflict and you want to tell me you're upset it with somebody, then before you come to me, fourth and fifth step it. And then he'd call me the next day and he'd say, what was your part? I want to hear it. Because you were telling me like it was their fault. And that's not recovery. 
You take personal responsibility and you get right. And then you ate the night step it. So those are the five things he blessed my life with. I hope you might consider those for your own life. So I shared a lot of information. Keep it simple, if for nothing else. Go to meetings, listen, ask somebody that you like, and, and get a sponsor. The rest will unfold before you. Pray about it, most certainly. And then once you find your sponsor, I just encourage you to listen to him or her because they almost certainly are guiding you in a good direction. They're wise. They intuitively know how, how to handle situations that used to baffle them, and they know how to give you the best. When I speak at recovery centers to people who are within their first 30, 60, 90 days, I always say, get a sponsor and do whatever they say because in the state you're in, if you were like me, nine out of 10 choices you're making right now in your addict brain are wrong. Nine out of 10. You listen to your sponsor, he's going to tell you 9 out of 10 right. He's not perfect, but the comparison between 9 out of 10 wrong and 9 out of 10 right will be a dramatic change in your life. And that's one of the reasons you need to have a sponsor and listen to a sponsor. Let's pray. Lord, thank you. This program is brilliant. It is, uh, it's, it's, it's of you, Lord. As we stand up here every week and talk about it, it's, it's, it's a Holy Spirit, scripturally led program that moves people forward in their life. And Lord, without a sponsor, we just spin. We just, we just keep, stay sick in our own thinking. And so Lord, would you just guide people to their need first and foremost? I so often hear, I don't need a sponsor. And I, you know, if they're not asking my input, I stay out of their life. But Lord, would tonight everybody here look at the seriousness of whether they need a sponsor or not. And would you provide that for them through the methods that are so clear and easy? And Lord, would the, the stories just proliferate of the difference it makes in the lives, Lord, as we reach more and more people with the hope of you and a changed life through recovery. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's stand and say the serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it, trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. Amen. First time guests, right through those doors. Second time guests, right up front. See you back in an hour.